Hello, everyone. Welcome back. Episode 9 of Smash Course is here to bring you all the magic and mayhem that is Collegiate Smash and beyond. Uh, I'm going to launch right into the pro side, though, because I know we are super amped, and I know that the guys are still in California uh, basking in the glory. That was 2GG. Guys, how was your weekend? How was the event? Tell us all about it. I'm so stoked. Yeah, honestly, it was absolutely amazing. Uh on, like from start to finish, I want to say I was just glued to the screen uh, watching all the matches. Elegant had a crazy run, of course. Leo, uh, who me and Max uh, have, uh, you know, honestly his his roots in competitive Smash uh, for Smash Four, especially. Um, we saw his breakout performance at Smash Factor when we went, and we were kind of you know spreading the MK Leo gospel to people in North America, saying like you know this kid's the truth. This guy's going to become a top-level threat eventually. And uh, to see, you know, everything come together and for him to put together a performance like that was honestly amazing. We were, we were like, definitively the, the Team Leo side. Like, on, on the stage, uh, on the left side was uh, the Team Zero side, and on the right side was the Team Leo side. And me and Max were on Team Leo just, like, screaming our lungs out. Um, absolute insanity. Like, great trash talk back and forth. Um, all in good fun, of course. And, uh, yeah, seeing our boy, you know, lift the trophy, walk away uh, champion felt freaking amazing. Oh, man, I saw all the definitely... pictures. That's awesome. Yeah. It was so amazing to watch that. Like Joe said, I mean, we've been, like, pretty much these this kid's number one fan since, like, day one. So it was so amazing to see him win the world finals of the very first circuit. So, um, yeah, props to Leo, man. That was, that was so sick to see, especially the way he dominated zero in winners finals, man, a 19% game like he took less than 20 damage yeah. from the best player in the world 3 0 him in the process and then you know even though it wasn't down to like a game 10 grand finals it's still extremely close i believe it was a nine game grand finals i mean you don't get much better than that it was like peak entertainment for smash and i feel like zero not winning kind of opens a new chapter in smash 4 even though he didn't win evo uh this year or last year really it's like i feel like he's the best player we all know that but he doesn't win when it means the most. It was kind of like M2K and Brawl. Like he never won an Apex, but we all knew he was either the best player or really hands down one of them. Um, so I'm just really looking forward to the storyline going into 2018 for this game. Salem kind of fizzling out at third place and losing to zero in the head to head. Uh, that was his chance to, not that match, of course, because he had already been decided by PGR standards to be the best player in the world, like a little bit. Or, you know, still number one on the rankings a little bit before uh, his set with Salem. So it really wouldn't have made a difference. But it still would have made a statement had Salem been able to take him out and make the grands. We could have maybe even seen Salem win. But uh, Leo dominated him too, man. It just looked like we saw a completely different beast and like a completely different level of play from MK Leo with, need I add, three different characters throughout this bracket, man. Nice. And what did you think, uh, HBox? I know you were sharing out there. Well, yeah, I was actually rebroadcasting it, uh, restreaming it the whole weekend. Uh, I think 2GG was cool with it. So it was something I promised my subs. And what ended up just supposed to be me watching a tournament ended up being like one of the most entertaining, just competitive events I've seen in a long time, any esport. Because what you want for a turn to be successful is, you know, especially an invitational, is good viewership and a lot of storylines to have a conclusion and new ones to be made. And in this case, obviously MK Leo raising his final win for the year, proving that he can still be the best player in the world and maybe showing foreshadowing who's going to be on top of this match for a throne coming in 2018 and 2019. A kid as young as him being able to beat everyone with that consistency at that tournament. I think the throne's going to go to him next, to be honest. But another storyline also concluded, which was zero once again, being ranked undisputed best player in the world consistency over the year. He's just been one of the most dominant players in any eSport. And it, it goes to show that you would think Smash, especially Smash 4, has a very high level of variance with so many characters and so many potential cheese. And it's two stock, but Zero somehow still manages to just be one step ahead of the curve in consistency. And so he, he really needs to be commended, not only as one of the best Smash 4 players, just one of the best gaming athletes that's ever lived. And then finally, Elegant. Um... You know, what better way to show that anyone can still come and shake up the rankings than with Elegant playing Luigi. Uh, yeah. Not only taking massive risks, just also just a great personality. You know, it's super good from an entertainment standpoint. The fact that he plays this kind of 
aggressive YOLO style and goes for these insane up Bs and hits half of them. And it's just really good for viewership. It's really good to, from a, like a spectator standpoint, you want to see a lot more things like that. So it's always neat to shake up the meta. And, um, I have no doubt we're going to see more of that going to smash Four. So Salem, of course, and, uh, the buzz had some good showings. Um, but this game is worldwide and you really need to step up more than you ever could have imagined. And I, I always like comparing Smash 4 and Melee, because Smash 4 has, at any point, one person who can beat the gods of the game, so to speak. Whereas Melee, whenever that happens, it's very rare phenomenon. It's like seeing a shooting star when it happens. And so everyone's like really more freaked out. But in Smash 4, it's like, well, I guess another player got upset. Um, that's a good dichotomy between both games, but that's why I enjoy watching both, because you get a little different kind of flavor in between what it means to think you're consistent and what it actually means to you know have consistency destroyed. So I'm looking forward to it for sure. Yeah, the uh, uh, the content was amazing, but I'll let you you step in first, Max. Sorry. I was just gonna say that Zero's consistency, I think, is truly the most admirable thing about his play. Like his peaks, we we all know his peak is just steady number ones, where there's 50 times in a row, or you know, like for 80 percent or or 50 percent of the tournaments for the season, that's still an incredible level of dominance. And we see MK Leo, he has this peak where he can even destroy Zero, beating him with literally 19 percent. But he can also get 13th or 65th at a tournament, too. So I don't know if that speaks more to the nature of the game or to the players. Of course, it's kind of a little column A, a little column B, uh, two-stock game with Rage and 58 characters. There's no way you're going to see one person on top forever, or maybe you will. And um, just their level of dominance will kind of shrink as people catch up and the skill floor uh, and ceiling, I guess, both go up. Yeah, and on top of, uh, you know, Elegant being the hometown hero, we actually came to realize that he just recently graduated high school. So um, to tie it back into the collegiate part, um, he's definitely eyeing. Uh, he said in an interview with Max that, you know, he's definitely interested in joining up uh, with a collegiate team uh, moving forward. So we'll see what the future holds. He might be uh, one of the next stars in the league as well. Wow, I can't wait. Uh, we'll find out in 2018. But you guys seem to really uh, find that the format was... Uh, conducive for this content, these stories to be told, right? Um, any takeaways from that that you want to discuss before we head on to what we can see in 2018? Yeah, I was, uh, like, I love seeing all these dream matchups so many times and very thorough, best of five sets, round robin pools and stuff. But the only thing that kind of run me the wrong way is that you could have lost, I, I don't have the exact number. One set, you could have lost one like, set. You, no, you could have lost. Oh, one one like, or two four. sets, I think it was like two sets maximum that you could have lost. No, no, throughout the tournament. Stage. Throughout the tournament. Oh, yeah, yeah, your problem with how you could lose fire. multiple sets. Sorry, yeah. I, was, I it, thought it, you were going to talk it, about um, yeah. round robin pools. No, you could have like four or five losses like, and still walk away winning this tournament, which I think is yeah. very cool, but also I could see how it rubs some people the wrong way. Like, you know, Zero, he didn't lose in group stage. He didn't have to play in the last chance qualifier because he was good enough to have qualified throughout the season, but he lost two sets and lost the tournament, whereas we could have seen someone like Elegant, who played so many layers of the tournament. He started in last chance, then he got second in his pool, so he went to the, the playoff bracket. You know, he could have lost a number of tournaments, or a number of sets, and still won the tournament, which kind of, like, you know, it may have raised some questions. Thankfully, it didn't happen. It was someone who had won his pool and qualified all the way through. But still, um, great for the content, man. It was just hours of top-level gameplay. I was super hyped about that, and I think that other tournaments should maybe investigate in this like circuit format where you get a long finale where all these players really find out how they rank up um, with a lot of head to heads and, and kind of round robin style stuff. Uh, however, I'm still, you know, round robin for other tournaments. I, I can pass on that. Let's speed it along the practical. So it's not a. I, I think it should always be round robin to determine seating. And if you get, <laughs> if you lose every set in your round robin pool, you get your last seed, but you still at least start in losers in the final bracket where it really matters. Because you have guys like Wadi who literally, you yeah, know, up exactly. the props posing to his girlfriend, but then he proceeded to only lose one one set the mm -hmm. whole pool. And then he got knocked out. Yeah. It was really weird. Yeah. Yeah, that that's what I was gonna raise as my only issue with the format. Not so much the fact that there were like multiple stages, but just um, you know, four person round robin pools is a super volatile format. And uh, you know, I understand the decision behind it, but uh, in the case of tiebreakers, it's just, you know, it's absolutely heartbreaking. And Juan mentioned uh, Wadi's case where, you know, he only lost one set uh, because of the way um, things worked out with uh, the set percentage. 
uh, win and loss due to the fact that, you know, Tweak threw um, that set essentially 3-0, whereas he beat Tweak 3-2. Uh, he kind of got the rough end of that deal. But um, overall, you know, I, I love the idea of doing round-robin pools, um, especially with top-level gameplay, just because we got to see so many matchups that typically, you know, you'd have to span across like six different majors to see if you can get those kind of head-to-heads to happen. But we got it all in one go, um, and it made for a really, really interesting format, I think. Yeah, and I feel like, you know, going into 2018, you know, you're going to have a lot more of these stories to tell. And um, we're just going to immediately go into the next event because I know we have so much on our stock today. So, um, Genesis, what are your thoughts uh, for the stories that are going to come out of that, going into that, and then the next event following? Because I, f- I kind of feel like since this is one going to be one of our wrap-up 2017 shows, we can kind of make some predictions and have a little bit of fun going on out. So uh, I don't know. How about you, uh, Max? What are you What are you most excited for going into Genesis? We'll go around the room. Sure. So last year, Genesis, of course, always the first tournament of the year um, since three came back. Right? It's a now a winter tourney, and that was a huge win for Leo. That was one of his debuts after having won Zero Saga um, in late 2015. He, I'm sorry, late 2016. He immediately took Genesis to start the year off very strong. And then now it's kind of the same uh, story to tell, right? He won a huge 2GG tournament right before the end of 2017, and then he's going to be the returning champion going into Genesis. Um, I'm a big fan of this kid's gameplay. Like he's the one that I'm, I'm really like excited to see grow and like take the throne uh, next. So I'm really anticipating that. I would love to see Leo win Genesis and just keep this like, is there a new king kind of storyline going on? Of course, he'll have to beat Zero in the process to really make that worth it. And like we've seen, you know. Although other top players get upset a lot more, Zero has lost to some very uncharacteristic uh, players before. So, I mean, it could happen that they don't even meet in the bracket. And there's like this additional level of pressure on Zero now, right? Like he's shown that he bleeds um, and that he hasn't been able to win the Evos, the two GGCs of this season. So who knows, man? Like he kind of won, like um, it was like a death by a thousand cuts to win the PGR this year you know he won a bunch of tournaments but he didn't win the biggest tournament so um who knows man i'm I'm really looking forward to it on the melee side i mean genesis is like a legacy melee tournament so i know the term the uh, competition is going to be like up and down completely stacked for melee like the top you know 128 to make it into there at that tournament like you have to be extremely good so um Joe and HBox, I know, are like a lot more ingrained in melee uh, in terms of like the nitty gritty specifics than me. So I'm going to let them speak more to that. But uh, really, it's Leo that I have my eye on going to Genesis. Yeah. So uh, HBox, what do you think? Yeah. Well, it's going to be like, I guess, in a sense, my personal return to major competing because after Summit, I took a little hiatus for the holidays. Um, it's going to be interesting to see. Again, it's not a tournament that I'm expecting to win, even though I'm going into it probably ranked first. Uh, I just want to make sure I get back into the groove and just, again, play the best melee that I can personally play. When it comes to the other guys, I mean, you know, Genesis has always been won or Grand Finals, like Armada Mango, I think every single Genesis so far. And uh, Mango has knocked me out, double limited me, like every single Genesis so far, too. So it's uh, it's just this funny way it plays out. But um, I really... I don't know. I really think that it's the last title under my belt that I need, because I think I've won one of every other series. Um, so that would be really cool to have. But also, seeing the results of an event like Pat's House, where you had almost every demigod there, apart from, like, Plup, Wizzy, and the Ag- okay, not demigods, but all, like, the up-and-comers between, like, ranks 9 and, like, 30. They were all there. And then Duck ended up winning. Zane got, like, third... Or Zane got second, you know, a lot, third, crush, fourth. These are the players you really need to look out for. And they're improving way faster than the other already good players are leveling up their game. So I think we're going to see a lot of shakeups in the rankings very, very soon, at least at that level. Um, I'm looking forward to it. I hope that more and more tournaments announce their event ahead of time because Melee lives as long as there's big events. And I think people are fiending for it they're feisty for it and i think Dennis is going to be the exact kickoff that we need regardless of what happens and also i'm going to be teaming with amsa and smash 4 uh Ooh, tough okay. for ninja. 
Yeah, we, we broke a thousand subs on Twitch, so it was the promise that I made. So I'm going to be doing nice. that. Um, so, yeah, I'm just looking forward to it. And I want to get back competing and get back into my element. So, yeah, it's going to be an amazing event. I, the past four have all been groundbreaking events. Uh, yeah, so you guys have touched on the community aspect. So, for sure, uh, Mango Armada, the rivalry, like, not, not more needs to be said about that. And then the potential Leo 2 Pete. It's also something that's really exciting. Uh, but I guess in terms of the event structure, I'm really excited to see uh, how things work out now that they've added so many games. Like there's you know Street Fighter, Marvel, even Dance Dance Revolution tournaments that are going to be happening there. Uh, so, that, so that'll be interesting to see you know what Genesis looks like in 2018 and how the event evolves. Uh, I've always you know viewed Genesis as uh, not just you know as a super major, but also one of those tournaments that sort of sets the stage um, for Smash for the rest of the year. Um, so for, you know, the first major uh, to kick things off, uh, I'm really hoping that it, you know, it, it gets people excited uh, for what's to come in 2018 because it sounds like uh, Genesis and all these events, um, Big House, all these big tournaments have a lot on the pipeline uh, and a lot to think about for 2018. Yeah, and it's uh, going to be great to uh, see what comes next because, in the collegiate uh, scene, we sometimes see responses to what we see played uh, on the pro side. And I know that we already had a great semester behind us and we're going into regionals. I don't know if you guys want to start teasing out some of the events that are going to be happening in 2018 so we can get people excited uh, just as much as they're excited for Genesis and the other events. I don't know. I'm going to let you guys take that mic. Yeah, we'll, uh, we'll get to that in just a second. I think first we'll... Uh just touch on what we do know already and then you know we'll save the big juicy stuff for the end uh, when we can tell you guys the dates and locations that we have for regional so you know if you're watching this video right now just stay tuned for two to three minutes and then we'll get right into that but um yeah so i mean what we do know now after this one semester in review we had 183 teams in total um for both games added together across 30 states and two provinces of canada i think Overall, a very successful season. We definitely could and want to do more um, for the 2018 and 19 academic year. Absolutely looking to grow that. Um, there are just so many students out there that play Smash on campuses. Like, if you're one of them, please, you know, check us out. Like, we're going to be running this season or this league, this circuit again in 2018-19 for sure. But also, there's going to be singles tournaments at our regionals and divisionals and Shine just for college students. So, like, there's still an opportunity to get involved even if you're not uh, part of one of those 183 teams that played in our local qualifiers. Um, you know, there were some ups and downs. Uh, we had we allowed four teams to qualify from each event, which we thought was really nice to give that leniency just so people can stay involved in the circuit for a long time. It's not just like, oh, I played in October or November, and now I'm done until next academic year. What a shame. Um, we want to encourage people to make it out to regionals, but it kind of made for a lot of no-shows because people in regions um, that only had two, three, or four teams, we're just like, oh, we don't have to go, you know. We know that we're going to auto-qualify, so we'll just see them at regionals. Not the end of the world. Um, but, yeah, I think, you know, there, there are definitely things we can improve on. We're totally open to feedback. Uh, Joe, I definitely would like to like, hear from you, you know, your, your closing thoughts, because we work so closely on this, of course. And then HBox, I mean, the, like, semi-outsider perspective, I would also love to hear from you, like, what other things you think we could add or, like, improve on that we're already doing. Because, you know, obviously... It's our job to make this blow up, but like Joe and I are really passionate about the collegiate scene. We think it's a huge boon to the entire Smash community, so we're we're just really looking to make it pop. I mean, I can already give like my immediate response is that you need to get the actual schools involved themselves. In like mm -hmm. Florida, for instance, you need to talk to the deans at UF, UCF, and uh, UM, the, like the three or four biggest schools there, and say they have, hey, I have this idea. I have UF already on board. I have these people on board. We want to make this a an inter you know, collegiate championship for esports and celebrate that and have your school pick out representatives because as soon as it becomes a school's agenda, everyone hears it. And then that's automatic involvement. In fact, it won't even just be involvement, it'll be competitive involvement. Like, no, no, I should be on the team, not this guy. And then right, that's right, really, right. Well, I think you should definitely get the schools to advertise it. And I think you guys have more than enough pull to do so. Yeah. Um so we can't announce it just yet, but um, one of the big projects that we're going to be working on for next year is going to incorporate both the top level, you know, professional players and, you know, your average student um, 
from you know mid to low level and even the high level players. Uh, we're going to get them all under one roof. Uh, so definitely stay tuned for what's in store. Uh, if you're on the West Coast, especially, I think you're going to be in for a treat. So um, yeah, in in terms of recapping uh, highlights of the season, definitely just you know the fact that so many schools came out uh, that we were able to put together you know a pretty I want to say full fledged circuit. Uh, first of its kind uh, with, you know, the kind of support and backing that we're having thanks to CSL. Um, really amazing to see uh, just so many students getting fired up uh, for collegiate level smash. Uh, Matt laid the foundations for us. And I think, uh, you know, we're just trying to do justice to not just the work that he's done, but also, you know, the vision that me and Max have had for so long as to how we can grow this scene and create um, that gateway to the professional competitive scene uh and even beyond like just opening up careers and just you know paths that people that players casters tos everything in between can really just get involved and help grow the community uh that's that's honestly the most exciting part the fact that i think this is honestly something that's vital to growing uh the super smash brothers community and we're you know pioneers so to speak and we're at the forefront of it kind of molding it into what it's soon to become um so yeah just you know i'm i'm really proud of everything that we're doing uh, all the people involved, you guys are all just as passionate as I am about it. And uh, yeah, this this event that we got planned for next year, definitely uh, stay tuned because that's probably one of my most exciting things uh, that we got down the road. Ooh, Not just that one, of course, but uh, our our eight regionals too. So um, yeah, I think we should just get right into it, guys. So. Yeah, go for it. All right, here we go. So the first in order, I'm just gonna read the date, the location. Real quick, so uh, February 3rd, we're going to have Mid-Atlantic, which is Tri-State versus DMV. It's going to be at Drexel in Philadelphia. It's going to be sick. Um, then right after that will be the next Saturday in California. It's going to be at San Luis Obispo at uh, Cal Poly. So North Cal and SoCal are going to be squaring off there. Then February 11th at the Balance Patch Video Game Cafe that uh, Big Blue Esports, of course, the founders of TMG, uh, operate out of. It's going to be there. Uh, Sunday, February 11th, then uh, keep on going to the Southwest in Amarillo, Texas. It's going to be at Battle Beaver Customs. I did not know they even had a venue, but these guys make some sick like controller um, apparel and gear and stuff. They are pretty popular in terms of like smash consumer goods and some really cool stuff. And yeah, they're uh, going to be hosting the event in Northwest Texas there. So that'll be the Four Corners. Uh, so like Arizona and Colorado, Utah. New Mexico versus Texas over there. Then Ontario at the rec room venue. It's a Cineplex venue, man. So we're uh, we're we're big, man. We're corporate now. <laughs> we're going up to <laughs> so rec room. It's, uh, it's like a, a bar and grill style gaming venue slash arcade. Really sick stuff. We you know our parent company. We're parent parent company, Cineplex. So they're able to hook us up with a venue like that, and um, we're really excited. It's gonna it's it's really pretty in there. Um, then first showcase of smash at that venue so we're gonna be breaking them into the community good stuff yep um yeah definitely excited to give like the cineplex side of the business uh, a taste of what we bring to the table um then february 24th at university of washington seattle we have the pacific northwest qualifier february 25th uh midwest it's most likely this is like a 90 percent confirmed but you know the venue may have to change but it's planned to be at u chicago for the Midwest East versus West showdown. Um, and all alone in March is going to be the Southeast qualifier at Georgia Tech. So that's it. That's the dates and locations for our eight regional tournaments. I don't believe I missed any of them, but um, yeah, guys look forward to it, man. It's going to be the eight teams. So, you know, four from each local qualifier that made it are going to be going up against each other. So the top seed from each region will fight against the bottom seed from the other regions. And of course, they'll work their way through the double elimination bracket. Top two are going to divisionals. Your team gets 500 bucks, uh, both of the top two teams. And then that's when things get real serious. Uh, divisionals, of course, you're competing for that first place $2,500 travel stipend to go to nationals in the summer. So I'm really excited that we have everything squared away. Um, we'll have a news post about this real soon on our site, if not already by the time the video drops. Awesome. Yeah. And I think that, um, you know, I don't want to say that I'm partial to campus locations, but having these events at campuses is so important. So the fact that you got, you know, places like uh, Drexel and uh, Georgia Tech interested and hopefully, you know, Chicago, that's 
that's great. It's what like what uh, Hungerbox was saying earlier. Getting the actual campuses involved is is critical. Uh, but not to say that having something at Rec Room is not cool because that's going to be a really nice event. Uh, hopefully, can attend that. So yeah, let's uh, let's you know make sure that 2018 is amazing and everybody comes out to these events. Uh, you can check out the op-ed that Max dropped on our site. You know, cstarly.com today. It's very impassioned about everything we've been talking about for the last 15 minutes. But we also talked about feedback. So if you want to drop us feedback, all of our uh, Twitter handles are here for you. Please do tell us what you thought about, um, you know, your com competitive uh, experience so far. So anything else you guys want to say? Or I feel like, you know, we had a pretty good show here. Yeah, I would just say keep playing online Smash one way or another, no. especially online Melee. So we it's all feeling good? Yeah. Use it for sure, and I, awesome. you know, I have I have a hunch that uh, there's going to be something special coming to the Switch next year. So just keep your eyes. Oh, cool. be good. I can't wait. Uh oh, yeah. All right, so that's going to be a big thing we're going to talk about. I'm sure on our first show back in the new year. But yeah, I think we're going to be on a couple week break. But I'm um, hoping also to see if we can get us on iTunes as well. This would be something that would be cool to have podcast format, and I think that'll be. Uh, you know, something that on your commute, commutes you can listen to us, you know, just say stupid things about whatever we feel like. So <laughs> thanks for tuning in to the last nine episodes. Stay tuned for episode 10 in 2018. Uh, it's been amazing. Thank you so much, everyone. Uh, keep in touch. Yeah. With us. All right. Thanks, guys. Cheers, everybody. Okay.